What's up, Tangerinis? I'm Jordan. I'm Maddie. And, and we're Tangerine, Tangerine Troubles. Troubles. That was not supposed to be in <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll just roll with it. Today, we're going to be sharing with you guys the real deal about Ahihik. What is it really like to be here? What stores are here? What type of entertainment there is? What the normal or weird things you might come across? What services you can find? And, and some shenanigans yep. <laughs> along the way. <laughs> Breakfast here. This place came super highly recommended. I believe it's in what's considered San Antonio. Unfortunately, with your allergies, you could only have one thing on the menu here and you had to get it customized. Yeah, so hopefully that goes okay. But this place is popping. I mean, we got a table all the way in the back, sadly, by the bathrooms. <laughs> but <laughs> just spray through the mouth and I think it'll be fun. <laughs> so, in our last video, we lost half of our subscribers from Guadalajara, <laughs> which was totally expected because some people only want to hear the positive side of things and that's not our channel. A little background on this, before coming to Mexico there were just a number of times for me specifically where people were super dishonest or just generally not straight up with me like at the dentist, my previous job, and friends or friends. So when we started making videos it was like, you know what, I don't want to get half-truths, I don't want to give half-truths either. We don't want to just focus on the positive or just focus on the negative. It should be a balance, healthy yeah. balance. And I felt like when I was researching Mexico that a lot of the negative sides of things were missing and there's a lots of news sources that focus only on positive sides of things. By news sources you mean like NBC or Fox News or what? <laughs> no, like Facebook groups, YouTube, uh, blogs and so on. I hope you guys understand that we're trying to put out information and content that sees both sides of the coin because we feel like that's the most useful and the mo most truthful. And I think it's the most valuable. Why don't you just do all the talking? <laughs> Jordan has all this stuff in his mouth so I'm just going to do all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> We're at this uh, local strip mall type mall area, outdoor mall, I don't know exactly what you would want to call it, but there's a ton of stores here. This is right across the street from a Walmart in town which is probably the biggest store. I think that exists. Mm -hmm. So we've never been here before. We're just going to explore around and see sort of what stores there are. Already we've seen a bank, telesell store, there's a casino, some clothing, orthodontist or something. So let's see. So here's an example of something that wouldn't exist in the US because the business would get sued. And you actually have to pay attention. <laughs> Right behind us here, we have a car wash. It's strange because they spelled it W-A-S-H instead of was. Working at the car wash. Whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. The car wash. We're at the car wash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On this side of the mall, we have a bank, sushi, orthodontist, dentist. And we went into the dentist's office just now, asked for a price list, like what it costs for cleaning. She said 300 pesos, and they, right now they have a promotion that includes a cleaning and a whitening for... And free console. Yeah, and between 1,700 and 2,300 pesos, I believe it was. Uh -huh. So this certainly isn't the most extensive mall that exists, uh, but it seems to be pretty nice, well kept. We just ran across the highway and almost died. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but right across the street is a Walmart, an AutoZone, and a Domino's Pizza. This is a behemoth of a store for Ahihik, I think. It's got to be the biggest store around. In my humble opinion, we would prefer to look at smaller stores, family-owned stores first, and then if we can't find something that we need, we would come here because it's pretty well stocked. We'll go ahead and show you the inside of here. But that's sort of my stance on it. Support local. Sage words of wisdom from Jordan. <laughs> so this is kind of like the dollar section here. Everything in here is 18 pesos. So we're walking around the store here, and to be honest, this doesn't look too different than a Walmart that you might see in the States, or at least any that I ever saw. Yeah, I think most sections are pretty the same, or pretty much the same as in the US. We notice pretty big difference in the electronic section, though. Um, <laughs> it seemed like quite a few a lot fewer options for a lot of things, but then you have a huge section of speakers because lots of people just bring a single speaker around. Yeah, it's very here. common for yeah. parties or going by the lake or things like that. So clearly they've catered the store a little bit to the local audience, but for the most part I'm not noticing that there's any gaping uh, holes in the inventory. Don't tell Alaska. 
we got a surprise for her. <laughs> She's gonna love this thing. <laughs> Thank you to Paul and Robin for telling us that we could find that here. Yes. So if we were staying here longer term, I would totally consider getting one of these guys. Tangerine colored, of course. Yeah, and how much are they? They're about a thousand US dollars. Pretty reasonable, and I think a better way to get around town than a car. It's kind of big and clunky, some of the streets are pretty narrow, so this is sort of the way to go. And plus trying to find parking for a car. Yeah, this is would be much easier. So one thing we wanted to interject on this whole scooter topic, because we didn't really go into why we would sell our car and get a scooter if we were staying here long term. <laughs> in each city there's certain preferred ways of transportation for us. For example, when we were in Mazatlan, that's the cheapest Ubers we've had in all of Mexico. There right? were like 20 bases. Yeah, it was like... So a... No matter where we wanted to go in the city, it was super cool. <laughs> but also you're... there in Oh yeah, Mazatlan. often times people would take what they call pulmonias, which are their little golf cart taxi type deals. With lots of music, it's a good good old time. <laughs> in Guadalajara, we also used Uber a lot, although it was typically a little more expensive there. Mm -hmm. But we also bike pretty much everywhere. <laughs> Using the bike rental and the BC thing. So here, the reason we said that we would prefer a scooter is because on the narrow roads with the potholes and everything and the lack of parking, cars can be kind of a nuisance and you don't really need a car. I mean, our preferred method of transportation is just walking everywhere and then if it's between cities, taking a bus. But having a scooter might be nice for those trips to Central where you're feeling a little lazy or going yeah. between towns or something. And we see so many cars that are scraped up on the side of the road it's from parking on a skinny road and cars just driving by scraping them up and then if you had a scooter you go out to the cartera when there's traffic backed up just go scoot on right by them not between cars though please don't do that for goodness sakes <laughs> save a life <laughs> do this at your own risk <laughs> this is not advice this is just what i might do if i were in a hurry i would not do that i would not let him do that i would hop the heck off that scooter walk by <laughs> us to wherever we're going okay <laughs> one thing we notice here is they don't do a, as good of a job pricing stuff like a lot of the things are missing prices and then, like last time we were here, we bought something and it rang up at a higher price than it was listed. So, check the prices, use your scanners. Something to keep in mind, yeah. One difference, one strange difference that I noticed right away is that everything in this store is in Spanish and pesos. So that's going to be a pretty big difference that you'll notice. <laughs> Sorry, I can't even keep a straight face. Of course it's in pesos, of course it's in Spanish, we're in Mexico. <laughs> Fortunately, you are going to notice on all the big signs that it'll say what it is, the title, cheese, queso, it'll say it in Spanish, but then English underneath it, so. Like ropa caballero, menswear. Mm -hmm. It's not too hard to figure out. Also, pictures everywhere. The Plus actual items standing out. It. <laughs> <laughs> prices. Prices, as far as prices go, uh, you're gonna generally look at cheaper prices for items that are made in Mexico, Mexico brands. Anything that's imported is obviously going to have that import tax on it. So you're probably gonna be paying slightly more than in the US, or significantly more, depending on what it is. I need to breathe more when I talk. <laughs> <laughs> so we always talk about how people will do what they can to work for their money. This guy behind me, he's working for it. And this is someone who we would tip, not the person that's just begging for money at your yeah. table. I also forgot to mention at this mall, at the Centro Laguna, I believe it's called, uh -huh. that there's one, there is a movie theater here. We've been told that there's another one in town, but it's less nice. This one has a little bit higher price tag, probably to go along with the Nice-ness-city. And it's not like this one is out of town, but in Ahihik. Yeah, more centrally located in Ahihik. We haven't been to either of these movie theaters, but I hear that this one here is about 50 pesos and nicer, and the one in Ahihik is about 35 pesos, and both have days where there's specials, like two for one or something like that. It's war! Guess who's back? Rock again. Dino's back. Tell a friend. So each city we visit, we notice that there is a personality in the vendors. So there's different types of products that they're selling in each city. Thinking back to Mazatlan, you could hardly walk a few feet without bumping into a swimsuit <laughs> vendor, which yeah. makes a lot of sense. Mazatlan, beach, and duh. <laughs> here there's vendors along the highway. A lot of times you don't see that, but they sell in hammocks and what else? Handmade, hand-woven rugs berries, furniture. I think it's kind of cool, especially if you're stuck in traffic, you've got some stuff to look at. You can just hop out of the car and buy some berries or something. In Mexico in general, there's a way different business mindset. For example, like when we were in Guadalajara, there were people selling empanadas and there were like a <laughs> hundred empanada vendors lined up. No, that was in Oh, oh, is that right? Yeah. 
Yeah, just lined up one after another. I mean, there were crazy. thousands of empanadas. I've never seen so many of one item concentrated in one area ever in my life. Uh, but yeah, so you're going on to like the competition mindset is much different here. Yeah, so like if one person's selling berries and someone else wants to sell berries, they go set up next to the other person selling berries. Which is dozen. kind of cool. I mean, at the end of the day, you don't need to compete. Everyone can win. Look at these little stews. Oh my gosh. So depending on the day of week, one thing that you're really going to have to keep in mind about Akihik is that parking is very limited. Today is the Wednesday market, which means all of the streets surrounding this market are pretty much packed with cars. We had to park pretty far away. We didn't really want to step foot in that market today because there can be a lot of people there. So right now we're in front of Dental Express. We just walked in to ask about a cleaning, how much that costs. This place has come highly recommended to us. People have told us if we need something, we should go here. Multiple people, so that's gotta mean it's pretty good. We just went in there, they speak English, um, and it's 190 pesos for a cleaning. They did say you need to make an appointment a week in advance. Do you want to try? Oh my gosh, the bugs! Oh my gosh! Get the toy. Can I have it? Can I have the toy? Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> Rawr. Rawr. Drop it. Ha <laughs> 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 I got it. I got the toy. Okay. Sit. Stay. Got it with her hands. <laughs> <laughs> I think she likes it. So we wanted to give you guys Alaska update. Thank you so much for everyone who emailed asking how she is and commented saying such lovely things and looking out for her. She is doing, <laughs> as you can see, much better. Oh no, don't, oh, you already, you broke, already it? broke the toy? What's wrong with you? Oh, I thought this was Five gonna minutes. last for months. Anyway. She is doing better. Her eel, her eel is healing. <laughs> her ear, <No>. ear, <laughs> and yes, she's doing great. So no, we will not be bringing her back to that place. But it doesn't seem to be bothering her that much, which is really good, thanks to the medical attention of our great vet. And we've continued to put a special spray on it so that the injury will heal. So in Ahihik, there are these bugs. You can see them right here, really just swarming. They come out often in clouds of them at night. They look a whole lot like mosquitoes, but they're not mosquitoes. They don't bite, they're just annoying. You can breathe them in, it's kind of insane. <laughs> but we actually don't know what these are called. If you know what these flying mosquito-like bugs that come in swarms uh, in the night are called, let us know in the comments. But a lot of people we've talked to think these are mosquitoes. We would have thought they were as well until Someone told us they were, are not. So this is when we turn the, the light on at night. Oh gosh, oh gosh, ah! <laughs> All right, so I have a quick little Spanglish lesson for you guys today. You may remember a while ago when I told you about what you needed to say if, for instance, someone is about to step in dog poop or if your dog is gonna do something that you don't want it to do, you say, cuidado, which is like, cuidado, be careful, watch out, and doggo, so, there's that, a little Spanglish there. The new one, we just learned in our, uh, in a rocket languages lesson, the word entendido, which means understood. So, when you get exactly what your dog is saying, you go, entendago, you understood your dog. And if you wanna learn great Spanish lessons, the real kind, you can do it like we do with the rocket languages. Link Shameless in the description. Plug. Shameless. <laughs> <laughs> Link in the description. Go click it now. Thank you, thank you, and goodbye. And right now, we're actually walking through what I think is a huge soccer field, but according to Jordan, it's just a regular sized soccer field. One of the many hidden features of Ahihik. This is the first time we've ever seen it empty, but people frequently bring their dogs out here to run around. There are actually soccer games quite often, and it's right by the lake, so it's pretty cool. Wow. Cinco? Yeah. Parjo cinco says. 
total single six. Oh my gosh. Anyway, <laughs> we just had breakfast at Pilar's again. You guys. I'm so satisfied. I'm so full. <laughs> it was so good. Um, you guys might remember this place when we did the $10 challenge. This is where we had breakfast. It's one of the most special features of Ajijic. I think that there are still these types of restaurants that exist that are family owned and operated. You might miss it if you weren't looking for it type of thing but definitely like the most flavorful, best food that you're ever gonna have. Yeah, I, we didn't know this last time, but if you come here, you must ask for the agua fresca. It's so, so good. The herba buena agua and fresca. Do you cheers on tequila drinks, non-alcohol drinks? When they're this good. <laughs> this has mint, something called moringa, which is like supposed to be super healthy. And then what else did it have? Love and deliciousness. <laughs> Best agua fresca I've ever had. It's so good. By far. I think there's like some lemon or lime juice in it as well. It's oh, yeah, super yeah. good. Oh my gosh. So I don't think they speak English here, but you can come in here, point to the dishes you want. They're probably going to be preparing about 10 different dishes and she'll put it on a plate for you. With fresh tortillas, the thickest handmade delicious tortillas. In addition to there being restaurants like this in Ajijic, there are of course the more established ones that you are probably familiar with, like traditional tables, chairs inside of a restaurant type of thing. We, we like these though. Places like Pilar's are one of the big reasons why we love Ajijic. And sure, you can maybe find some of these in a big city like Guadalajara, but they're certainly not as prevalent and they might not be in the desirable parts of town. So we enjoy that it's sort of like mixed and sprinkled throughout the city. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up and... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And gong that bell so you get notified the next time we put out a new video. And we'll see you there.